Welcome to Art on the Air. We've been speaking with Excel Kiefer, whose exhibition Black Light White Noise opens tomorrow night, December 7th, from 6 to 9 p.m. at Invino Veritas here in Savannah. She received her bachelor's degree in comparative literature from the University of Strasbourg and spent her early postgraduate year studying poetry. But it wasn't long before she was drawn back towards the visual arts. Her paintings, collages, and drawings can be found in, found in private collections throughout the United States and Europe and in print in numerous magazines, newspapers, and journals, including the most recent issue of Collage Magazine. Her next solo exhibition, called Black Light White Noise, opens tomorrow night, December 7th, from 6 to 9 p.m. at Invino Veritas here in Savannah. Welcome, Excel, to Art on the Air. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Let's dive right in, Excel. When I was doing a little bit of research about you and your work, you mentioned that you are the daughter of a painter and that you grew up smelling turpentine in your house, which I thought was actually kind of funny. So why don't you give us a little bit of background on how did you get involved in the arts? How did your family kind of introduce you to that? Uh, first of all, it was, it was not my father. It was my grandfather. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> so um, I was, when I was going on vacation with my grandfather, this is when I had the first approach to art. And it was doing this kind of big landscape with old painting. So he, he passed away when I was very young. And um, so what I remember is the smell of the turpentine and him hunching over a canvas. Mm -hmm. And I was very impressed by his grandfather figure. So he kind of lived, um, lived with me. So Right. So was he a professional artist then or was he just doing it sort of as a hobby? Was he showing in galleries? What was his experience there? Um, no, he was just a local artist. I mm -hmm. don't even know if he did any shows. His paintings are kind of um, divided with in, in, in the family. Okay. So, um, so again, you were raised obviously in France and... What I found interesting, again, as, as looking up into your biography, is that even though you had an interest in visual arts early in your life through your grandfather, you ended up getting into comparative literature. So how did that come about? Um, it came about after the graduation. I had the choice pretty much to go or in scientific college or in literature and I never thought to go in an art school it was never an option for me um, maybe it was the pressure of my parents to have like a decent job <laughs> uh <-huh>, right <laughs> <So> <laughs> certainly I think a lot of us have as artists have experienced that for sure that's yeah, so between math and literature I, I choose literature and it was very interesting um, I in France, we don't really have major or minor mm -hmm. in college, but pretty much um, I will specialize myself in Russian literature and North African literature. Okay, very interesting. So, And I really like um, the way um, literature was taught. Um, it was, the teacher was kind of crossing all um, literature, uh, visual art, movies, history. So when we will study a book, we study a book in the context of what happened in painting, in history, and um, I, it, it was very, very interesting. So you had kind of a lot of cross-disciplinary studying then when you're, even though you're involved in learning about literature, it's still touching on your art background there. So what ultimately led you back to art? Because after graduation, um, I noted that you were spent some time studying poetry specifically. So you continued, obviously, with literature after graduation, your postgraduate work. But ultimately, you kind of got back to making visual art. So how did that transition ultimately happen? Um, actually, this transition happened when I 
during my post graduation when while I was studying poetry, um, well, it happened a little bit before. Um, is uh, I met I met an artist I really like um, before to study my post graduation. Mm -hmm. And who's that? Um, that was Rose Williams. <coughs> um, is a singer painter. Um, and I met him on tour in Germany, and from from ninety three to ninety eight, I was in contact with him, and pretty much if we, <laughs> because I was so scared to do art, like to not be good enough, um, but he told me that it's it's not important. The important is you have to do art. You have to make it. Whatever is good or bad, just go take a pencil. Um, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> so it kind of free all my anxiety and fears. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and do it. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that was a big, a big encounter in my, in my life, yeah. And so when about was this? What time? Uh, what, what time period was um, this? I met him in 93. Okay. And so... You began to work on your own pieces, your own visual art. Right. And obviously that was still in France. Right. Now, in your current life, you've obviously moved to doing things on kind of a more professional level, doing exhibitions here around town. Obviously, I became aware of your art for the first time back in 2015 through an exhibition at the Butcher Gallery here in Savannah. Mm -hmm. And we've seen your work all over town at various spaces, including Sulphur Studios, and now you've got this exhibition opening tomorrow. So let's continue the the storyline here. So you start working on your artwork in a way that you weren't before around 93, but that was what? That was very Almost private. 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, wow, yes. <laughs> um, and it was very private practice. It, it was not a meant to be to be shown. Or, um, it was more like a was challenge. A personal, was, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <I> was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So continue. So it was personal. Then when did the transition? So when did you get to a place where you felt that you were ready to show it to the public and? Let's talk about that experience. So mm. why don't you give us give us that moment? Well, my first exhibition, I was forced to do it. <laughs> 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 um, it was uh, a group of friends. They have an encore punk band. And they did this kind of festival over the weekend. And they wanted to bring some visual artists. And they included me. They forced me to bring pieces and hang <laughs> on the walls. <laughs> they didn't tell you first. They just told no. They you told that me, but they didn't really let me the choice. They said, "Okay, bring your pieces, and it's gonna be fine." And like <laughs> 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 so that that's the first show. <laughs> well, and so about when was this? Was this somewhat more recently, or was this early two thousands? Maybe I don't remember. Maybe 97? Okay, so you've been, like then that kind of puts you in, then you've been essentially showing your work publicly for about 20 years now. This would be sort of the 20 year anniversary of you getting out there in the public. That <laughs> may seem like a big reveal to you. Uh, yes, I didn't, yeah, it didn't. It's interesting. I didn't realize. You should have it advertised the years. show differently now. It's the 20th anniversary show for you now that you're showing. Yes, Amazing. I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 20 We've years. Got to wow. redo everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, so in looking at your resume and, and what you've been doing recently, obviously you've started to have a bit more notoriety, especially here in Savannah. Collage Magazine is obviously a very prestigious magazine. I'm aware of that as, that one as well. And you've been getting some really nice coverage here in town as well. I think that people are starting to get to know your work here. So why don't we jump here into Savannah? And I encourage everybody that's here listening as well. We have posted up a number of Excel's pieces on our Art on the Air Facebook page. So that way you can 
you can look back to those pieces. And amongst those, we have drawings, we have collages, and we have paintings. So let's talk a little bit about your process. So why do you choose those particular media? And maybe if you want to talk a little bit about each one of them. Um, first, all, all my work in France was painting. It just moving in America that my work um, really shifted. Um, and I started to do collages here in America. Um, the first few months I was in Savannah, I was... Um, I couldn't work, and I was spending a lot of time in flea market. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was collecting little objects and a lot of books, like medical books. I, I'm kind of obsessed with medical imagery. <laughs> and are you yes. familiar with? I'm sorry. Are you familiar with the Dover books, the Dover collection? I was wondering where you got a lot of your material from like the medical illustrations and where did you find those uh in flea market around right. in, in the south like every time i go on a trip so somewhere it was i go random and it was more or less you yes were going for the intuition of yes and i found a lot of medical book like in salvation army here yeah and they were free because nobody wanted them but beautiful illustrations sometimes inside yes that you can use. yeah i love that <laughs> And so you started collecting these books, and they're obviously something that you were interested in just on a personal level. What made you decide to start thinking of them as a potential component for your artworks? Well, it didn't happen in one day. It was, <laughs> it was a long process. I was still doing a lot of painting, um, and the painting process for me is, um, is very long. Mm -hmm. And I was working on this painting, and I was kind of stuck. Um, and I couldn't find a way to make it work. And I was getting very frustrated, so I, I needed to step away from my painting and to do something else. Um, because I'm always in the doing. So I right, right. even if I'm not painting, I have to do something. <laughs> I have to find a project. Sure, something to, to exercise the creative outlet. Yes, right. And so I have all those books and material um, sitting in my studio. And I was collecting these vintage cabinet photos. And I don't know, one day I'm like, oh, why not trying to do collage above those photos? So my first collages, I, I really, um, I tried to collage the background on the photo and mm -hmm. not the character. But it didn't work at all. And quickly, I switched and I put the collage, like, layers above the face and above the characters on the photos. This is how it started. <laughs> right. And so at the time, so your current collages are very complicated. The, it requires a lot of detail in cutting these pieces out, laying them out. You have juxtapose, juxtaposition between images that are very complex. And is that how it began? Were you, were you immediately drawn into that sort of complexity? Or was, the, was it sort of a, a slower process to get to where you are now? Or has this kind of been, once you sort of figured that out, have you been sort of on this path for a while? And then secondly, you've also integrated some non-collage into your collage. So some you've, you've added on top of those collages with your own additional elements. So talk a little bit about both of those things. So the development of the collage process over time and then how you've come to sort of add on to that as time has gone on. Um, when I started to, to collage, um, the medical imagery, it was very simple collage. It was a rib cage above uh, characters. Um, and one thing bringing another, uh, my collage started, uh, yeah, they, they are more and more, getting more and more complex. And I really, it's, it's kind of a challenge because it's kind of playing with combination. Sure. And 
I really like it. For me, it's the most exciting part of the collage is to work with all the tiny pieces and try to take from a picture coming from a book and to give another meaning to this piece of paper. Um, so do you have an idea in mind before you start to make the collage or do you, are you cutting out pieces that you find sort of to be interesting and you've got, I can imagine this sort of pile of cut out bones and body parts and things <laughs> like that, <Yeah. laughs> like your work. And yeah. <laughs> then you're playing with those to sort of create your work. Is that is that the way it is? Or do you have a pretty good idea of what you're trying to go for when you when you sort of sit down to work on one of these pieces? I, I, I'm trying to cut the pieces uh, in advance and to put everything in category. I, I'm starting to work like this because I have so much book and piece of paper over in my studio. It's, it's a mess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yes. so I started to, to put in tiny box boxes, like all the nose, all the skull, all the feet, all the I birds. I was just imagining that when you said that, of how those categories would be laid out. Were you labeled with different body parts? And, yes, and different then flora yeah. and fauna and such. yes, and by color. That uh, would help as well. Yeah, because when I'm, I start to do my collage, I to make the collage, the visual collage work to me, and it's a combination of color too. So color that's why color and composition. Color and composition. <laughs> but I think what. Uh, he was asking also, but uh, it, what I was curious but, uh, about all as well was that when you start generally pieces, oh, thank you very much. When you generally start pieces, uh, you, you have a rough idea of what you want because you have a sense with these parts laid out before you start. And you have a sort of a, do you have a, a sort of a, a, a goal in mind or do you let it develop as you go along with what you have available around you? Does that make sense? Yes, that okay. makes sense. <laughs> okay. uh, I work a bit um, the two ways. I have the two options. Um, for the portrait based on vintage photo is I get along with the photo itself. It's the photo yeah. that speaks to me. That's <laughs> Right. I, I'm trying to dig into the characters I have in front of me. Um, and now I have, I have goals. <laughs> well, I, with you add, when you add the other elements to that, with your, w besides the collage, when you take it beyond that, that's, that's obviously you've got more goals than, I mean, obviously you're expanding your work now with that. And which is beautiful, by the way. I think uh, it's, thank you. Yeah, it's, but, I didn't mean to take away, Rob, but uh, oh, I no. just wanted uh, to delve into that a little bit. That's all. Absolutely. We are, we're, um, for those of you who have just joined us, we're speaking with Excel Kiefer, whose exhibit Black Light White Noise opens tomorrow night, December 7th, from 6 to 9 p.m. at Invino Veritas here in Savannah. And we've been speaking a little bit about her, her collages. And I think what David's asking about as far as expanding on the collages I think it brings us in a good transition to let's talk a little bit about your paintings as well. Because I have to admit, I fell in love with one of your paintings at your exhibition <laughs> back at um, the Butcher Gallery. And for those of you who haven't had a chance to see XL's work, I urge you to go to Art on the Air's Facebook page, which you can find by doing a quick search for that. And we've posted up several of her paintings. So. When you're going to start a new piece of art, like a painting, what you said it's a long process for you. How does that work? How does that whole process from pulling, putting the canvas in front of you to final execution, let's go through that. Since you said it's a long process, <laughs> maybe you can enlighten us a bit. And painting is a totally different energy than to do collages. Just by the scale and the physical uh, involvement of being standing in front of a canvas and... Well, and you're thinking about one right now. As a matter of fact, that you may be working on in the future. It's always in your mind that you're going to come back to it. You need a, and you have to focus on what your painting will be. Is that what you're saying? Or did I just put words in your mouth? 
that is not what I was saying. But okay. <laughs> but well, it's okay. We'll, we'll try it that way. Well, let's let's take a so we up on the art on the air page. We posted up a an image or a series of images that you had personally posted up on social media of the process of you creating a painting, and mm. it went through many many steps. So. How does that, we're looking at that visually, but how does that work for you process-wise? Like, how are you, what are you thinking of? How long does it take you to create one of these paintings? And how do you know when it's finished? How does that process work for you? Um, it, it takes a long time for me to finish a painting. It's between six and nine months. Wow. Uh, I'm very slow <laughs> in the process. <laughs> it, it takes a lot of energy to me. Um, when I have the canvas in front of me, I just start directly with the painting. I never sketch or um, even doing my research, I never s sketch or sketch on the canvas. It's like kind of, I work pretty much the painting I would like to do in my mind and I kind of daydream over what I would like to do. Um, so I start directly the painting on the canvas and doing this kind of apply. Um, apply is a French word, sorry. Um, no, well, uh, what's the French word? We'd um, like to hear it. Apply, apply de peinture. <laughs> okay, and so what does that roughly translate to in English? Apply the pencil. Um, to put these big layers of paintings on the canvas. Um, okay. Like there can be just one color, and I work layering. with layering. Layering. Uh, I work. Only with layering. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's why it takes a long time. Because, <laughs> because I, I wait that it dries or it doesn't dry. And I come back and bit by bit I have a figure um, that kind of reveals itself on the canvas. Right. So it emerges as time goes on. And so you're, you're saying, you say that it is a very sort of emotional, almost exhausting process for you to be working on these pieces. So how do you work? Are you the kind of person that will get in front of your canvas and sort of work very rigidly, say, every evening for three or four hours? Or are you the kind of person that will spend a little bit of time on a piece and then maybe it'll be weeks or months or months before you come back to it? How do you, how does your process work in that regard? Um, it, it can be a few weeks. Uh, between the time I come back on the painting and then it can be a um, period of time I will go back every day um, yeah I'm really constantly in di dialogue with my painting <laughs> so um, so then how do you know when it's finished how what is what determines for you when it's done is it just an internal feeling does a painting ever finished? <laughs> Can we ever finish a painting? I I, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of right now in the process of um. I'm looking at the painting I did in France, uh, um, that I have here, and I don't like them anymore. Really? No. Um. They're not your friends anymore. Well, uh, my project is to make them my friends again. So I'm gonna paint over my oh, old wow. paintings. Because um, I had so I and these are things you've worked. It's been years since you've last worked on them, and you're going to revisit them. Is what you're talking about? Yes, this is what I would like to do. Yes, that's fascinating that you could go back into that after years of of being apart from them. So you have these paintings around you, and you don't like them anymore. So you're going to update them to the person that you are now, essentially. Exactly. Um, I'm a bit more mature uh, with my techniques and I know more I have to control um, the margin of the color than like 20 years ago. 20 years ago it was very impulsive and so na now I would like to use this very impulsive painting and use me <laughs> na now um, to work on the painting again to make them mine again. This is exactly a story that I heard about Picasso's works, that it, it's almost exactly what he says. And it's about how a painting is not finished. There was a painting of his at the Louvre, and 
one day, I don't know if the story is true, but I love the story anyway. <laughs> Uh, one day an old fellow came in, he was watching, he was looking at the paintings, and he took some paints and brushes out of his coat and went up and started painting on the work that was hanging in the Louvre. And the security guards came over and grabbed him and made him stop. And it was Picasso uh, who was painting on his own paintings that were hanging in the Louvre because he just didn't feel they were done yet. And it was years later after they had been hung. So it's so difficult to know when... It, something is finished ever well maybe the painting is finished when somebody bring the painting home and take it away from someone the studio. loves <laughs> it yeah. <laughs> someone loves it and that's who it was for sometimes well that's you know that's really interesting because you know i i've considered this question quite a bit and with what you're talking about here is it important to you that other people like your work or is it just important that you like your work? Or is it maybe a combination of those two things? I mean, how does that, you're going to be re revisiting these works. And when you say that, I have to admit that I'm kind of cringing inside because <laughs> I think of those paintings and I love those paintings. Oh, you haven't seen them. <laughs> well, see, I haven't seen them. Maybe they've been totally transformed at this point. But that's, that, so that's, but I mean, so what do you think? Do you think that that's important? Does it matter that I liked what you did before, or is it only important that it satisfies sort of your n current needs, or is it maybe a combination of those things? Or first that you're satisfied. That's the first thing. And then it has to go out in the world and maybe satisfy someone else. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does. Okay. Um. <laughs> and that's a ponderous <laughs> question. It is a ponderous yes, question. Yes. <laughs> so let's well let's simplify it a little bit then. Okay. So, do you care if other people like your work? No. <laughs> no, it's it. it well, mm. it's always nice, but it's not. If somebody like or dislike my work, it's not what um will make me go in a studio or not going in a studio. It's like really, I need to do something. <laughs> yeah. It's like really in the making process yeah. that, um, that I'm addicted to. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, so essentially, now let's kind of put together a, a, little, bit of a little bit of a scenario here. And first of all, let me remind you all that you're listening to Art on the Air on WRUULP in Savannah. And we're going to do something over here. We're going to give a little quick break here for a couple of announcements and we will be oh, right I back. If you enjoy our programming on WRUULP, please support the station with a donation. As an individual, you can give any amount, become a basic station member, or become a serious fan of the station. To check out membership rates and to donate to the station, go to www.wruu.org individual and select to donate monthly or subscribe to an annual membership. Again, to donate to the station, go to www.wruu.org slash individual and select to donate monthly or subscribe to an annual membership. Thank you for listening to and supporting WRUULP. The Rape Crisis Center's 8th Annual Reindeer Run is Saturday, December 16th, beginning at 8.45 a.m. at the Savannah International Trade and Convention Center on Hutchinson Island. Events include races for all ages and a cookie contest. For more information, 912-233-3000 or rccsav.org.
Welcome back to Art on the Air. We've been speaking with Excel Kiefer, whose exhibition Black, Light, White, Noise opens tomorrow night, December 7th, from 6 to 9 p.m. at Invino Veritas here in Savannah. And we've spent quite a bit of time talking about her collages and her paintings, and we're going to move now into talking specifically about the exhibition that I just mentioned that she has coming up. So... Excel, why don't you describe to us what the exhibition is all about and what you're going for with this current body of work? Uh, two, mon- two months ago, um, Sofra Studio uh, contacted me and asked if I wanted to do like a solo show um, in Vino Veritas. And I was like, sure, two months. <laughs> <laughs> So plenty of time to no, do a painting that takes not, you not really. six to nine months to make, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> so this show is um, a collection of um, all recent painting and recent collages. Um, I tried to select them to create them so it can make sense all together. And um, the title "Black Light, White Noise." Um, in a show, you, you can see that um, there's very dark work, like dark, like, mm. I mean, um, black. <laughs> like Use actually it. looks dark, or yeah. do you mean emotionally dark? That looks black. That looks okay, very dark. good. And it's a bit macabre, too. but <laughs> That's not a surprise. <laughs> We're used to macabre. We're uh, good with this. <laughs> And on the other side, I have white work. (laughs) So I I try to play on on the opposition black and white. And black light, it reminds me, especially like my collages. Um, And black light is a personal reference to to forensic work. Oh, okay. Because I I did. Oh, that's great, yeah. in France, I try to be a forensic agent, and I d- I work a year um, on passing all the exams. And um, well, that's giving us a lot of insight into your collection of these books, then from the flea markets for sure. Yeah, I I, I learned I had to learn biochemistry and a lot of things, and I prepare all those exams and. Surprisingly, I, I, I surprised myself that um, I went through all the process. We were like 3,000 people, and the end, we were just eight person. Wow. Um, oh. hmm. So I, d- I put the food in forensic work, and um, that's why I referenced black light. And it's related to collages, as I said um, previously, is because... Um, Black light is kind of reveal invisible marks, and I feel like the collages and the portrait is I kind of make visible what is invisible on the photo. Um, oh, that's fascinating. I try to make speak the characters like um, by adding layers of paper on top of the photo. Um, it's not only bring another combination of the portrait, but um, the f- I like um, this combination um, 
Is it an actual layer to the story? Yes. <laughs> Somebody um, told me recently that um, my work um, has a lot of Eden stories. Right. And I really like this. <laughs> I think right. that's an accurate description from an outside observer. I think that that's a really good descriptor of your work. There is a certain, like you said, macabre or kind of darkness to it, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. It doesn't feel oppressive in its way. You know, there's something, I, I, I guess I would use the word hopeful about the, the works there. Yes. So how do you find that balance there with these, these new works you've got? You've got these dark pieces and you've got these light pieces in sort of a juxtaposition within the exhibit. But as individual pieces, how do you find, is it a conscious thing actually that you're creating these works which have dark themes and um, maybe subject matter that on the surface would be a little bit less common for somebody to say put in their living room you might you might say and but then also you know putting something up that people can i guess not be scared away by the content uh, the the initial their initial reaction to engage with it a little bit more so do you consciously think about that or is that just are you walking that fine line just naturally would you say uh, i work this line naturally <laughs> i mm-hmm. don't really think of it <laughs> Um, so you just do your thing and then you just, yes. fortunately, people seem to like it. Yes. Oh, they say it's very dark or they like it. <laughs> or it's uh, naturally balanced. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, see, it's interesting because I know that in this particular case of this exhibition is that the Sulphur Studios has curated this and they're, they curate numerous exhibitions around town at various venues. And this is obviously, this is a wine bar. So you're going to have a certain type of person that's going to be going in there. Their sulfur has obviously determined that what you're doing isn't so macabre that you're going to be scaring people out of the door of the wine bar. (laughs) So it's a wine bar. (laughs) Yeah. But I think that that's, it's interesting that there is, that you're able to sort of find that space where you're working with dark themes without without scaring sca- people scaring away scaring people away <laughs> yeah exactly Making it acceptable to as part of life yes yes but um we know veritas is what is beautiful in this place is this you are this huge gray walls mm-hmm. and the kind of industrial feeling of the space um, this is what I like about it, and I, I find my works pretty m- works pretty well in the in the space. I wasn't, yeah, I'm surprised how it, it works out. <laughs> well, so now you've this show through Sulphur Studios and their curation program is not the first time that you've shown with Sulphur, and you've actually. Um, worked with them on a number of projects. I've seen your works at Sulphur Studios, of course. Do you have a studio there, actually, that you work from? No, so you just have shown in in exhibits, their group exhibits and such. Yes. So I think that my personal opinion is that Sulphur Studios and other, and a few other galleries in town are are really um, having a pretty significant impact on the Savannah art community. So... You've been working with them a little bit. Um, so what is your take on the Savannah art community in general? What was the first time that you started to show here in Savannah? Was it that Butcher Gallery show? Was it your first major thing? Or have you been? how long have you been showing here in Savannah? Uh, the Butcher show was a major um, show here in Savannah. But the first time I exhibited in Savannah was in 2010 mm-hmm. in the De Sotero, uh Gallery. Sure. And it was a show about local only, and I had the paintings there. So I really started. Um, was it a group show or was it? There was a group show. Right. There's locals only. Right. Yeah. Well, that's see, that's I see, that's what I'm really interested in because I 
from my own perception as an outsider, you know, as somebody that moved here from elsewhere as well, I moved here from Los Angeles. You obviously moved from a little further away, but from a very different context and moving in here is that I've really felt that the art scene has transformed quite a bit in that period oh, since oh, yes. I moved here in 2011 myself and what it the art scene is here in Savannah now versus what it was when I first moved here it's night and day. It's a totally oh, different experience. I agree. I agree. At the beginning, it was a bit scary. <laughs> yes, exactly. There is nothing um, for local artists. There is no much, no much place to show the work. And I was pretty isolated, too. I didn't have all the network of um, artists um, that I now I know in town. Um, yeah, it, it was very different. And I find that it's, it's been like three, four years. Uh, Art Rise started in 2011. They, yeah, they definitely. They did a fantastic job to bring people to our marches and um, to galleries. And then Sofra Studio um, opened their space. And of course, the Bertra Gallery. Um, Jenny, she was. Oh, uh, Jenny did so many good shows. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> it's unfortunate that gallery is actually they're they're done. They did their last yes. exhibit. So. Mm. Oh, that's sad. So now you said that you've kind of started to build a network with other artists in town. Is let's talk about that a little bit. Um, let's talk about some of the artists that you kind of admire in town. Can you give some examples of some of the people that you've kind of come in contact with? Some artists in town that your your work. Um, that you've really enjoyed seeing their work and and maybe some exhibits that you've seen over the last, well, let's say the last year or two that you kind of really spoke to you? Oh, wow, that's a hard question. Mm. <laughs> Just say me. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> yeah, okay, next question. Yeah, that works. But there, there's so many varieties, though. There, there's so many here. Uh, uh, yeah, the, what I like the about Savannah scene is, is the diversity. This right. is how you say right. Yes, it is. Yeah, is uh, sometimes overwhelming <laughs> with all uh, the show going on. And the the Friday night is so much opening at the same time. It's, it's like you almost have to pick one, <laughs> yeah, one or two, sure. because it's impossible to do all of them. And well, or you know, you can't stay long at each one at the at the very least <laughs> because there are so many it's it's been growing more and more over the years yeah really i'm wonderful. not complaining i find it's oh yes fantastic. i understand i'm Absolutely. saying the same it's it's fan it is fantastic and the community has been more working together more and more over the years and more people are staying here and realizing we help each other out that way yeah we have a very and inspire each other and everything else as a community should uh, it's a very dynamic um yeah it's very dynamic <laughs> so if you were then i think the three of us that are sitting here and probably most of the people that are the, the literally tens of thousands of people who are listening to the show right now <laughs> would probably or know at least these three yes. blocks. <laughs> at least these three people here yeah. we know a little bit about the art scene in savannah so we're inclined to go out and look at what's going on but to the outsider to somebody that doesn't know savannah's art scene and and how far it's come in the last few years how would you convince someone who maybe hasn't given savannah the chance that it should get to come in and look at these works like what we've talked a little bit about art rise we've talked a little bit about sulfur studios but how would you convince somebody who maybe is listening who hasn't really come out to the exhibits yet and to come on out and see what's going on how would you convince them savannah is a cradle of so much different people coming from so much different city and countries um. it is a wide variety it is one of the little cities of, of the world that a lot of the world comes to and it seems like they come here and they feel comfortable here that's it, the big difference yeah it feels home yes. kind of quickly instead of just visiting when Absolutely. People, most of the people I've known that I've talked to that have come here, even if they don't live here, that they just feel like 
they're sitting on the front porch wherever <laughs> they are in Savannah, even if they're walking around in the squares. But it's just a comfortable place, and it's really good to have foster a creative environment and community here with that in mind, because we're not going to be moving too fast out of here. We're pretty comfortable the way we are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just the way it is. It's an over. Uh, it's a prevalent uh, feeling over the place. So you know, it's. I think that one of the preconceived notions that I had in visiting Savannah, and I think this was probably a pretty true statement when we, you know, you said back in 2010, for me, 2011, is that I had this idea that the galleries were generally showing paintings of fountains and of hanging moss and (laughs) things like that. Mm -hmm. Variations on that theme, the, um, you know, the little girl with the the scales. And I mean, I saw that painting or those three paintings. A thousand times. Yes, a thousand times. And, And so... I know that that's the image that lodged itself in my head as to what is Savannah art. That was what Savannah art is. And I think that that's not the truth anymore. The truth is we yeah. have exhibits like yours that's coming up. We have Sulphur Studios. We have all of these places on the Art March. We have incredible things happening with the Jepson Center through their Art 912 yes. program. Yes. I'm exceptionally, um, you know, we have, of course, Lisa Watson's exhibit, Avangardia, which is open now at at the Jepson Center. So I think that that's one of the things that when I think about trying to get people to, to revisit Savannah's art, because it's changed. It's not exactly the same the same thing as it was five, six, seven years ago. Yeah, it, it went from the landscape, the Savannian landscape painting to a very contemporary scene. Um, pretty quickly, pretty quickly too. In a few years, yeah. So now you can find installation, like very crazy exhibition. I mean crazy in a good sense. <laughs> right, and we've um, we've been talking, David and I, we've been talking a little bit behind the scenes about the sort of push for murals in in the te- in the city and um we're starting to see a lot more sort of public art around a town a lot more public art and the city wants more public art as a matter of fact which is really great they'll they'll work with you absolutely and we'll have uh, we'll have ways to find that out very easily um speaking of events coming up uh yeah, should we talk a little bit about some of the, the things that we've got going on here? Well, I don't mean to just shut you off right now, but we're talking about your event, which is really great. And Thank you. I love your work. And, uh, and uh, I didn't realize it was in, a vi- in, vin- in Vino Veritas, as a matter of fact. So it's a lovely place. But we do have some events coming up, and you are listening to WRUULP Savannah on 107.5 FM. This is Art on the Air, uh, and let's just wrap some stuff up here with some events coming up. How's that? Sounds good. The Creative Networking Night at Algo Rhythms is tonight, hosted by Regis. Uh, 5.30 to 7.30, so that's not far from right now, as a matter of fact. They'll be having a a second series of their Creative Networking Night uh, at uh, Bowl Street, second floor, 100 Bowl Street, second floor. Uh, Hors d'oeuvres and beverages will be served. I was going to say, they hope to work with a bevy of local artists throughout the year for the quarterly event. And uh, like Rob says, hors d'oeuvres will be there, so that's the important thing. Uh, and a mural unveiling is tomorrow morning. I mean, uh, yes, tomorrow morning, 9.30 at 6.01 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard uh, at the Burger King is there now. But it used to be where they had the Union Station train terminal. And there's a recreation of that as well as the Great Savannah Races coming up on the murals. On Friday, December 8th, visiting artist Michael Lalone will be at the Cultural Affairs Black Box Theater. Uh, He will be giving a demonstration and a lecture of this unique work. And 
He says that Clay folks are among the most giving, genuine people he has met, and for this reason, he was immediately drawn to that type of personality. I love that quote. On Saturday, free family day at the Jepson. I have marks to make. Hands-on activities at this opening celebration and festival. Learn about artistic empowerment, which we all need more of. And activate your senses by creating art with different materials, which is always a lot of fun, too. Uh, the fourth annual Craft Scout Savannah Holiday Market at the American Legion Ballroom is 10 to 6, a one-stop shop for handmade gifts from talented artists and craftsmen of the area. While enjoying live music, holiday beverages, children's activities, and the chance to support the local creative community. Uh, that's December 9th, a truly one-of-a-kind experience. And, of course, the December Savannah Art Walk is on every second Saturday, a free, inspiring, and positive energy event for our community and tourists of Savannah, Georgia, to explore the plethora of exquisite and diverse galleries of our historic district. Uh, it's full of nature and peace, this historic downtown of ours, and this is one way to view it while you journey through our magical city and visit as many of the participating galleries as possible. The reception is at River Street, 124 East Bay Street at 2 p.m., to start off, oh, and Calvin Thomas. Or yes, Calvin, that's Calvin right. Woodham will Calvin be, Woodham. Calvin Woodham will be... Uh, this Saturday from 6 to go. 7, Calvin Woodham will be giving an artist talk at the DeSoto Hotel as part of the aforementioned Savannah's Art Walk. The DeSoto is located at 15 East Liberty Street. Yeah. Yeah, and he's a local abstract artist and very good, as a matter of fact, in my opinion. Uh, Sierra Club Art Auction was coming up. The Georgia Chapter and Coastal Group, the Georgia Sierra Club, it's from 4 to 8.30 p.m. It will be over at the, uh, the uh, International Trade and Convention Center. Uh, an evening of live music, food, and local art to benefit the Sierra Club Georgia Chapter uh, generous support through the generous support of artists from Savannah. LaGrange and other areas of Georgia. They'll be auctioning various pieces through silent bids. Paintings, prints, sculpture, jewelry, and much more. They'll have a live band providing tunes throughout the evening and a presentation featuring the campaigns and programs that the Sierra Club of Georgia has been committed to in 2017. So that sounds like a fun time. Coming up at Space at the Savannah... Well, uh, space stands for Savannah... I'm going to guess here. I wouldn't do that. Let's not guess on that. Okay. We'll just say space at 9 West Henry Street. The Department Street. of Cultural Affairs at 9 West Henry Street. Very good. They have three classes coming up Saturday that are available if you'd like to look into this. The Soap Making Workshop from ages 17 up. Uh, the Holiday Glass Fusing Workshop. This is all Saturday night. Ages 17 up. And the Sewing on the Machine Open Studio also ages 17 up and that and those are all new or coming up this saturday tuesday december 12th the free area artist showcase hosted by the international trade was this the same one right oh no this is a uh, hosted by the international trade and convention center the free area artist showcase and the newest artworks at the savannah trade and convention center they have added a new feature, an audio tour. Bring your headphones to plug in and learn about the local artist and their work. And Savannah and Saver will be in serving tasty hors d'oeuvres. So Given the time that we have left, why don't we say our goodbyes here to Excel? Again, her exhibition, Black Light, White Noise, opens tomorrow evening, Thursday, December 7th, from 6 to 9 p.m. at Invino Veritas at 102 East Liberty Street, Suite 109. Excel, thank you so much for joining us on this inaugural episode of Art on the Air. Thank, thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. We'll be uh, having our next show coming up. Savannah Magic is coming in. And uh, we'll be here every Wednesday from 3 to 4 on WRUU Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, and streaming everywhere at WRUU.org, 
We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. I'm David Laughlin. And I'm Rob Hessler. And we'll see you all next week. Thanks for listening.